everybody, and welcome back to another episode. My name is Dana, and I will be your host, and our guest today is Mr. Vince Scott. Hello, Vince. How are you? Hello, Dana. How are you? Good to see you again. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me back. Yes, so we have a lovely, exciting topic that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about NIST 800 171 Revision 3, a new hot topic. So the first thing is going to be, what does it have to do with CMMC? Right. So <clears throat> CMMC is based on NIST 800-171, uh, securing controlled and classified information in non-federal networks. So how do I protect the government-sensitive information in my .com network? And NIST 800-171 is the publication for that. We've been operating off revision two for a number of years. Um, Revision three draft is now out and it's a major rewrite. All right, so what are the main differences that you would say between two and now three? Um, so I was a bit surprised at this. I was not expecting a major rewrite. I was expecting them to add some more things on but not really fundamentally change it. This, um, fundamentally changes a number of the controls. So they added a bunch of things. They combined things that already existed and changed them. So for example, if you look at the very first control in 171 Rev 2, 3.1.1, uh, you know, how do you control access to your environment? That was a single long sentence. Now it has seven subparagraphs, something like that. So we've added to that. Uh, now, some of it is the same stuff, maybe broken out a little bit, but we also have added new things and sort of fundamentally changed the requirement. And I did not expect that kind of fundamental change to existing security requirements. So that's that's change number one, right? Change number two is they've added three no domains. So they have added um, uh, a planning domain, uh, a systems acquisition domain, and a supply chain risk management domain. And planning, think, we have always talked about policies and procedures aren't explicitly required. However, it's really hard to pass if you don't have. Now they're explicitly required. Um, system acquisition talks to how you buy equipment to bring into your system. And supply chain risk management um, talks to how you manage your subs and partners. And those are, those are new domains, that's new work, et cetera. Now, one thing is that the same is there are 110 requirements. But as I said earlier, now, the requirements are expanded and have lots of subparagraphs. And um, so there, there is a significant amount more work in there. I don't think it's double. I'm roughly in the, it's 150% of the previous requirement because they're, you know, they, they've changed it around, but a lot of those things still are the same fundamentally that you need to be doing. However, uh, you know, an extra 50% of work is still an extra 50% of work. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people asking, so how is this going to impact me right now? If there's no finalization on things, how is, what is, you know, why should I be concerned? So right now, today, this does not impact you, right? So there should be no panic over this. And I, in particular, don't recommend anybody to go out and start changing things in, to meet re revision three. It's not final yet. There's a chance the comment period is currently open. There are chances that some things will change. And one thing that NIST has proven themselves to be is open to input and respectful of comments. So if people come back with um, you know, well thought out, articulate comments that, about why to change something, um, they're not opposed to saying, okay, that you're right. That's a good idea and we're gonna make that change. Uh, highly respect NIST for that, and Ron Ross, the, the leader of that charge, and, and what his, he and his team are doing there. Um, but 
in the fall, we should receive the second draft is what they have said. They're going to publish a second draft sort of, Hey, here's the final version before we, we go final. Um, I'm going to start in my own environment where I'm responsible. Uh, we're going to start trying to adopt revision three once we, we have the final draft. So I'm not going to wait till it's final final, which is expected sometime between December and February. So fairly soon, actually, right? So the NIST is moving out on, on getting this done. Um, we could see it as early as, you know, before Christmas this year. But uh, once we have the final draft, that's going to be kind of the 95% solution. And I'm going to go out, you know, start actually moving my program to align to the new revision after that. Are you having a hard time finding new customers? A lot of folks just like you in the IT and cybersecurity space are in the same situation. And they have embraced a new opportunity to get new clients. They're doing this by growing their online presence and maximizing the power of LinkedIn. Have you asked? I have a tried and tested method called my cyber social program. I myself have been on LinkedIn and now have over 3.5 million LinkedIn views. And over on YouTube, I have over 750,000 video views. So I can show you exactly how I have done that so that you can promote your organization and become the authority in your industry. And the best part is I've done all of this organically without one paid ad. You don't need to waste your money over on Google with pay-per-click ads. Now's the time to establish yourself. Look around. The competition isn't doing it. This is your time to shine online before they do. So if you're ready to start your online journey and future-proof your business, please, down below, click the link and schedule a time for us to have a 45-minute call where I can review the exact methodology of the Cyber Social Program. You can also click below to see some of my master classes, which will give you quick little snippets of a couple of things you can do right away on LinkedIn that will help with your profile. I hope to see you and hear from you soon. So one of the things that you and I were briefly discussing before is, you know, I know that, you know, the div is basically, again, always going back to, you know, why should I care about this now if I'm not going to be required to? And, uh, you know, whenever they finally finalize it, that's when I'm going to start getting, you know, my act together. But we've also talked about how there are some people that are being proactive and they're trying to, you know, let's, I mean, this is yes. good business practices in general. So let's just touch base a little bit on that about how some people are saying, well, you know, when is this going to be in a contract? And you and I were talking about maybe not even until 2025, which is a little discouraging. And then some of the proactive people that are then going to push it down through the system to their subs. Yeah, so for the proactive people, right? So for example, where I'm the chief security officer and we've been chasing this ball for a number of years, um, I would argue that change is inherent in the cybersecurity system. If you think you're gonna get a list of requirements and they're never going to change, that's not the way IT and cyber works in the, in the modern context. In fact, the real security threats in the IT architectures to address those threats are changing way faster than the government regulations are, right? So, you know, part of the challenge with revision two was some of the things that are in there that are kind of 1990. And, and this worked to address some of those. Uh, no split tunneling was a good example of that for technical reasons that, you know, it's just different now than when they wrote that rule. and. <clears throat> Uh, you know, they're, they're bringing that forward now. And that's a good thing. Change is going to happen. Um, the downside of this is a lot of the preparation for assessments of this is based on your documentation. And so a, a major rewrite like this is going to necessitate a major facelift on your documentation stack if you choose to stay aligned with the standard, which I recommend that defense companies do. Um, I think that's the best approach for them from a risk management perspective down the road when assessments do come. Um, if the assessor can't figure out how you're doing this or find a piece of documentation that covers something that needs to be covered, or you miss that because you said, I've got my policies and procedures and we're just going to stick with that. 
you could still get a not met and that could be very painful. So I, I recommend and intend to myself align with the standard so that the assessors can go right down the line and see what, how you were meeting their requirements. But uh, in this circumstance where they've gone through a major rewrite, uh, now we've got work to do. So just touching on the assessors real quick, because obviously as things are changing, they need to learn what's changing too. And, um, you know, I know that, not, that again, nothing has been finalized. So how is that happening now? I mean, you know, we have revision three versus revision two. So how is this affecting the assessors and how are they getting up to speed? Yeah, I, I don't, there's nothing formal in the assessor training pipeline yet that addresses this. What I think we will probably see is an update to the training for assessors uh, in the future and possibly a requirement from the accrediting body for assessors that were certified under the revision two standard mm -hmm. to get some kind of Delta course for the revision three standard. That's speculation on my part. Um, maybe we will see that. Of course, I am also an assessor I'm absolutely getting up to speed on revision three, starting by detailed line by line commentary on it back to NIST. And then obviously I also am fortunate in a way that not only do I, am I an assessor, but I have a responsibility in a defense contractor for, I'm an OSC, an organization seeking certification as well in another hat. So, I will certainly be getting familiar with it in our own journey to implement uh, revision three. But I think there's going to be, honestly, a requirement for, for certified assessors to be proactive and stay up to date with the standard. Um, because in my view, we will probably begin CMMC certifications using revision three rather than revision two, based on the timelines. If NIST follows through, which we have every reason to believe they will, and let's say by January of 2024, so a little over six months from now, Revision 3 is out and final in the, the, the law of the land, if you will. And then CMMC assessments don't start for another year or more. I don't see CMMC assessing a version of the requirements that's more than a year out of date now. I just don't think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong. They could decide to stick with revision two. I don't think they will. And so um, I think it behooves companies to um, certainly this fall and in, in beginning next year to start looking at their programs and, and measuring themselves against the new standard rather than the old standard. Uh, because when a real assessments start, I think they will likely to be against revision three. All right. Well, this was really, really helpful and obviously a very important topic that everybody needs to get a little more savvy on. And uh, I appreciate your time and obviously your expertise. You're always on top of everything when it comes to this. So thank you very much for that. It was great to talk to you today. 171 Revision 3 is an important topic. Yes, it is. Well, thank you again. And hopefully we will see you back and we'll do, talk about something else. All right. We'll see you again soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.